this is Jason with AV Pro Edge, and today we're going to be talking about something that most of you are probably running into in the field all the time right now, and that's managing 4K and HDR while working with AVRs and other non-18 gig products. Uh, we're seeing lots and lots going on right now with mixed systems, and we want to be able to give you guys some tips and uh, help you work not only around some object or around some um, objectives and and help you uh, work with some of these products and uh, We'll give you some tips and uh, at the end of the webinar if we have some time uh, we do have uh, some questions we, there's a question box that you'll see on your screen my colleague Tom will be manning the question box throughout the presentation and he'll be answering questions as we go and uh, in the in the case that we do not uh, get to all your questions I will answer them uh, individually and post the questions and the answers on the Meridio forums <clears throat> so thanks again and uh, my name is Jason Dustel I am with AV Pro Edge. Uh, I'm the I'm, I'm the trainer. I'm a lifelong AV enthusiast. I've been uh, around this stuff my whole life. I love it. I live it. I breathe it. Uh, I've been in the AV industry professionally for almost 20 years. Uh, 15 of those have been uh, home theater installation. Uh, 10 of those 15 have been ISF calibration, and five of the last 10 have been teaching ISF. We are AV Pro. Uh, that includes Meridio. That's HDMI test equipment. Uh, some of you may have used our products before with video calibration with our generator. Uh, we also make troubleshooting equipment, the Fox and Hound kit and the 6A and 6G generator analyzer kit. Uh, AV Pro Edge, that's all of our video distribution products such as matrix switches and extenders and things like that. Uh, we, uh, we're very proud to, to be very cutting edge and uh, we make a lot of unique products that not a lot of people um, have made before. Uh, everything's military grade. Some things have even up to a 10-year warranty. Um, and we're the leaders right now in 4K HDR wide color gamut. And and uh, as far as the 18 gig technology stuff, we've been pretty on top of this stuff for a couple years now, guys. And um, if anyone's ever called our tech support department before, um, you know we, we do offer some of the best support in the business. So why are we here today? Um, right now in the AV world, it's a bit hectic, hectic because we have um, a a mix of devices. Some devices are HD, some devices are UHD, and it really reminds me of like the late 90s and early 2000s when we were switching over from standard def to high def. We had problems with um, you know devices not working, cables had to be upgraded. Uh, that happened again when we went with 3D a few years later, and we're seeing it all over again. So you know you may have a system right now where you have a brand new TV, a brand new source, all 4K and UHD capable, but maybe your receiver is a little bit older. Uh, maybe you you put in new devices throughout the system and the infrastructure is still a little bit older. Maybe you have an older extender and you might be wondering why you know why I can't get HDR or 4K to play on this TV. Um, it, it's a big issue right now. Uh, even HDMI cables, you know, if your HDMI cables are a couple of years old and they don't pass 18 gig signals, you can buy all new equipment, you can upgrade uh, extenders and matrix switches and things like that. But if you're using old HDMI cables, you still run into those same kinds of problems. Uh, this is causing a lot of headaches for you guys. I know it is. We take tech support calls on this stuff all the time. So today we're going to learn a little bit how to test some of this equipment to make sure that it's capable of doing what you need it to do. We're going to talk a little bit about testing HDMI cables to make sure they can pass those high bandwidth signals. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how to work within these systems and, and how to work around some of the older devices without having to sacrifice any picture or sound quality at all. So real quickly, we'll go through some uh, history of HDMI. It's been around since about 2002. Uh, we started seeing products with HDMI connections on it in 2003. By 2004, only one year later, about 5 million products around the world were HDMI compliant. Uh, fast forward 11 years to 2015, the number goes from 5 million to 4 billion. So in 11 years, we had a, a massive increase in devices that were HDMI capable. And really the question, guys, here is, is HDMI going anywhere? I don't think it is. Uh, we have to be very, um, we have to be very on top of this and very proactive with with all these changes. Uh, in 2002 to 2006, we saw HDMI. The very first early versions were 1.0 to about 1.2. Those were able to pass, you know, 4.9 gigs, no problem. 2006 to 2013, there was an upgrade right around there. We went from HDMI 1.2 to 1.3, and into HDMI 1.4, which was all 10.2 gigs capable. And then um, right around 2013, and and into and what we're dealing with today still is HDMI 2.0 with 18 gigs per second. And uh, if, if most of you have seen this news, I'm sure, but in 2017, I believe it was in November, the uh, HDMI uh, people announced that the spec had been written for HDMI 2.1, which gets us to 48 gigs. 
um, are we done? I don't, I don't think so. In fact, we've already seen um, some numbers like 178 gigs, what, what might come after 48 gigs. Don't know when that's going to happen, but um, it, it's, it's going to keep evolving and we have to stay on top of this stuff. So not only can we uh, work within these systems and, and make sure that our, our customers are getting the best picture and the best sound, but also too to save you guys from, from massive headaches from dealing with uh, older infrastructures and things like that. I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of replacing infrastructure in a home uh, every five years or so. So we'll talk about some things today that'll help you with some of that stuff and uh, hopefully give you some tips to make your life a little bit easier. So the first thing that we have to think about is the entire system. And you know, it's, it's, easy, to, uh, it's easy to sell your customer a, a brand new system, right? You, you get a brand new TV, a brand new source, brand new receiver, uh, brand new cables, brand new infrastructure. Um, you know, and that's the ideal situation. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice payday, but uh, you're also doing the entire system at once. So you know, there's a lot less troubleshooting, a lot less headaches, but things can still happen. Uh, unfortunately, that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing people upgrading maybe the TV first and then the, the sources. Um, you know, in a, in a really good scenario, they do both at once. Then they may wait a little while for the receiver, and then um, you know, then you start talking about infrastructure and switches and things like that. Um, you know, when we're when we're building these systems and we're we're doing retrofit jobs, we have to make sure that every single uh, piece in the system is 18 gigs cap capable, and if not, how we can still work with it. Or, or even work around it to make sure that we're getting our customers the best picture and the best sound. Um, and again, that, that's anything from the display to cables to extenders and switches and, and sources themselves. Some of the problems that we see with mixed systems, and when I say mixed systems, just to be clear, I just wanna make sure everybody understands, that means a mixed system uh, might have something like older TV, I'm sorry, a newer TV with older infrastructure, older sources and things like that. So some of the problems that you guys see on a daily basis, I'm sure some of the things on this list look mighty familiar to you, You've probably gotten some clients' phone calls, you know, eight o'clock at night. Hey, what happened to my HDR? It's not working. I need you to come over. I've got a party starting in an hour. Uh, things like that. Um, you know, jobs that you think are going to be really simple. You might be out of there by five o'clock or six o'clock in the afternoon. And because of uh, all these issues that we're going to talk about today, you end up there till eight, nine, ten o'clock at night. So again, we want you guys to have um, the easiest, you know, job possible. Uh, be able to work around this stuff and, and at the end of the day what it really comes down to guys is making sure that our our clients and our customers are happy and you're not rolling out a truck every every few days because there's uh issues with the uh is issues with the system so a couple things that we can do to make sure that all the devices in the system are um are 4k capable or hdr capable or 18 gig capable uh for one never assume um some of you may remember around 2012 or 2013 we started seeing TVs that were 4K resolution, but did that necessarily mean that the TV was also HDR? No, it was standard dynamic range, Rec. 709, just with more pixels. So don't assume that a product is, uh, if a product is 4K resolution or 4K capable, that it's also gonna do the full 18 gig and, and HDR and things like that. Uh, there's a couple things that you can do to check. Uh, always the manufacturer's website is, is easy. You, you know, usually uh, find the model number and you can find that information pretty easily. Uh, you could always read a review on ratings.com or CNET or one of those websites. They're great at uh, you know letting uh, letting everybody know what these devices are capable of. You could always give us a call at our tech support uh, department. Um, they deal with this stuff every day, and they've got a lot of this stuff. You know, they know it off the top of their heads whether a certain model number can do 18 gigs or not. And then, of course, you always have Google, uh, which is always uh, always a good good resource to use if you're stuck in a pinch. So next, what we're going to look at are some of the causes of some of these headaches. Uh, we'll give you some tips on how to work with, with this stuff, and then um, at the end, we'll talk about some solutions and how to get around it. So you may have a receiver, for example, that's 18 gig capable. Um, now, does that mean that it's compatible with every version of HDR? Maybe, maybe not. I dealt with this with my own personal receiver on my 5.1 system. Um, it was 18 gig capable, but it wouldn't pass Dolby Vision, for example. So, um, you know, you have to look for things like that. Uh, Dolby Vision and Hybrid Log Gamma, um, those might not be available on some products and, and some model numbers until you update firmware. Uh, updating firmware for uh, in the system for all your devices is super, super important today, not only for HDR type stuff, but also you know new late, later versions of HDCP and things like that too. Um, you may never get Dolby Vision on a certain product. Uh, you know, maybe that manufacturer doesn't want to do Dolby Vision. Maybe they have an idea of what they want to do and they don't want to pay Dolby the licensing fee and that's up to them and that's totally fine. 
So you may not see Dolby Vision or HLG or Technicolor HDR on every single device. It may never happen. So keep your eyes open for that types of stuff. Every source, every modern source at least, uh, that we have been running into lately, they are capable of some of these high bandwidth signals. Uh, Apple TV has been doing it now for a while, the Roku. I've seen some 4K DirecTV boxes with hybrid log gamma. I think uh, the, the Masters with Golf, I think that was an HLG. The PS4s, the Xboxes of the world. We're even seeing some laptops and tablets that are 4K with HDR. Um, so there's a lot of, of products now that do it. Um, you know, it's not like, not like it was two, three years ago when we were talking about 4K and HDR and it was like, well, nothing can really do it and there's really no content. You know, right now in 2018, there's lots and lots of content. And there's lots of devices that support it. Um, and again, just because the device is 18 gig capable, does that mean that it does, you know, every different flavor of HDR? You may have a client who read a lot about Dolby Vision and that's what they really want. So we have to make sure that we're putting in products and we're putting in uh, devices that can handle Dolby Vision. So here's one cause. Here's something that you might see uh, out there in the wild. Uh, this is actually a very common setup. Uh, something that our tech support department we've taken calls about systems like this you know on a regular basis it seems like uh, you may have a system with three displays in this case there's a 4k display in the living room there's a 4k display in the bedroom uh, but maybe the the uh, projector in the theater room is still 1080p now of course it would be very easy to upgrade the projector to something that's 4k and hdr capable but you know that's not exactly the cheapest solution and you know maybe your client really loves that projector maybe it was something real high end and they're still really happy with it you know, but they want to upgrade the rest of the system for 4K and HDR. Um, now, what you normally would have to do, and um, you know, without knowing this stuff, is what, what would happen if you sent a 4K HDR signal to that 1080p projector in the theater room? You know, you're probably not going to get a picture at all. Um, if you knock down the whole system to 1080p, then the projector's happy. The projector will play 1080p all day. But now you have a 4K display in the living room and the bedroom with a 4K source. And because the whole system had to be knocked down to 1080p, you're not getting the 4K and HDR in those two displays. So kind of, you know, what was the point of, of updating the system? So um, we'll talk a little bit about some solutions too to help you work within these systems. The other thing that you guys are seeing too is, uh, you know, maybe the house was pre-wired with Cat5 a few years ago and now they want to upgrade to 4K and HDR. Um, you know, Cat5, depending on exactly how it's done, might not always be able to carry those high bandwidth signals. So uh, you know, I had a situation recently where a friend just built a brand new house and the builder, um, you know, he did probably what he's done for years and years. And every single location in the house for a TV had Cat5 and coax ran to it. And, you know, if I was building a home right now, I don't know if I would do it like that. I might look at something like Cat6 that can uh, take more bandwidth and things like that. And also consider things like fiber. I mean, we're talking about 18 gigs today, of course, but you know, when we talk about 48 gigs with HDMI 2.1, you know, fiber is going to be something that we're going to be talking a lot about here coming up really, really soon. So think about your infrastructure as well. And uh, we do have a couple of solutions for you that will let you still get HDR and 4K and all those beautiful pictures, even though the infrastructure is a little bit older. We'll talk about that in a few slides. Now, me being a big audio guy, I, I love music and it's uh, you know what I enjoy the most. Um, you know, maybe one of your customers has a receiver that they love the way it sounds, or maybe they love the way it operates. It's easy for them. Uh, maybe they have an app on their phone they can control it with and things like that. You may have a customer who just will not let go of that older receiver and that's okay. Uh, you know, we've got a solution to be able to use that awesome receiver, but also still get, um, you know, 18 gigs and, and 4k and HDR over to the display. One thing that people always seem to forget, it seems like, uh, HDMI cables. Not all HDMI cables are created equal. Not all of them can carry 18 gig signals. So, you know, the last thing you want is for uh, one HDMI cable in the entire system between the source and, say, the matrix switch or the receiver, that one HDMI cable is not 18 gig capable, and now the whole system has to run at 1080p. And that's a total bummer. You know, if the system is 4K, we want to watch 4K. So we'll go over some things today to teach you, uh, you know, about testing HDMI cables. Uh, the biggest advice I can give for any integrator right now, I would be doing this if I was still in the field for sure, I'd be running Conduit. Um, you know, when you do run Conduit, that's going to future-proof you for later. You know, if, if you end up having to rewire the home in five years or 10 years for, you know, 48 gigs, for example, if uh, all your cables are in with Conduit, it's much easier to pull them through. You don't have to crawl through the attic again. So Conduit can be your friend, especially, especially today. 
now that we've talked a little bit about some of the problems with you know older AVRs and older infrastructure and older devices and things like that, let's take a look at some solutions. Um, and again, our main goal for you guys is to be able to you know get the customer the the best picture and the best sound possible. So we have to be uh, we have to be very smart about how we design the system and, and the devices that we use. So let's take a take a look at a very common solution. Uh, this is something that uh, we see the most of, it's, which is why I wanted to cover it first. And that's with a older receiver, um, but with a brand new 4K source and a brand new uh, you know, 4K TV. Um, and in this particular case, you know, the receiver might be five, 10 years old or whatever, and it cannot pass those 18 gig signals. So you have to make a decision. Do I run HDMI from the source straight to the TV and get full bandwidth video? Well, where does that leave you with sound? You know, now you're um, having to you know, use something like optical or digital coax, which is okay, but that's not gonna get us all those high bandwidth audio soundtracks on our movies either. So, you know, you might get Dolby Digital 5.1, which is which is good, but you know, if that system is capable of Atmos and the movie is capable of Atmos, then why not get why not get that? So uh, we've got a solution for you here to be able to not only get the high bandwidth video to the TV, but also get the high bandwidth audio to the receiver. And that is with uh, that's by using a splitter. In this case, it's a one by two HDMI splitter. So if you take a look at the uh, the diagram here, you've got a um, a 4K matrix switch which is taking in some 4K sources. Um, one of the outputs for the matrix switch for one of the televisions would go to the input of the one by two splitter. Output number one is full bandwidth video that rolls up to the TV, so you're getting your your awesome 4K HDR content. Output number two is only 1080p video, but it still retains all of the, the high bandwidth audio. So again, for example, you may have Dolby Atmos. So just by putting this little device into the system between the source or the, or the switch in this case and the TV and the receiver, you can, um, you can still achieve the high bandwidth video, you can still achieve the high bandwidth audio, and um, you know maybe now you can put off replacing the receiver for a few more years. But a very inexpensive and very simple solution. Now this is for one input. What if you had multiple sources? We have a solution for there, uh, there for you too. So in this case, this is a four by two matrix switch that's 18 gig capable. So you can see in the diagram that you have you know, four different 4K sources um, and you have an output to a 4K television and then another output is over to the receiver. So whether you have one source or, or, or multiple sources, we have a couple solutions for you too. So again, on this slide, it's something simple as a one by two. And on this diagram, you could have something like up to four sources and up to um, up to two outputs. And this is also a matrix switch too, so you can send, um, you know, you can mix your signals. So if you wanted to say, you know, watch TV or watch a football game but listen to music, you can still do that too, which is something I like to do. Solution number two: What if you have an older display in the system? Um, this is very common. I see this a lot. It happens at restaurants and bars, but also in homes. Um, you have a distributed video system with two displays um, and you have a 4K source. So uh, if one display is UHD and the other display is HD, you know, what do you have to do in that situation? And typically what you'd have to do, you know, traditionally at least, is you'd have to knock down the 4K source to 1080p just so you can make the one 1080p happy. But there's a solution for you. This is a scaler and what the scaler does, it'll take in the 4K source or the 4K signal, and it'll bring it down to 1080p for one display. So you would put this scaler right in front of the display. It's the last thing in the signal chain before the TV itself. So out of the matrix switch, you're still 4K, you're still HDR, all that fun stuff, and that's going into the 4K display directly, and you're not gonna have any problems there. The scaler would go in between the matrix switch and the other display, or maybe a receiver in the other display. Some receivers have multiple HDMI outputs. So again, there's no need to sacrifice um, video quality or, or audio quality when you can you know, have a little product like this that will, that will fix these issues for you. What I like about this particular scaler is it's nice and small. It's about the size of a deck of cards. Um, you, know, you can very easily you know, Velcro it and stick it to the back of the TV. It's out of sight, out of mind. Um, there's a couple buttons on there for some settings. You can lock those. So if somebody's reaching back there to clean or something like that, they can't accidentally press a button and and, and uh, you know, cause an issue. Uh, this is a very, very simple solution, very inexpensive solution. Uh, and this is actually the most common thing that we're, we're doing right now is using a scaler. Now this particular product works very well if you have to bring the, the signal down from 4K to 1080p, but what if you have to go even lower resolution than that? 
Um, sometimes I see in restaurants and things like that, in sports bars, you know, there might be, you know, let's say there's 25 TVs in there, and there are still maybe a handful of those TVs that haven't been upgraded yet. Maybe it wasn't in the budget. So maybe some of the TVs in there are still 720p or, or even 480p. So, um, you know, we want to be able to, to work with those products as well. So there's a new scaler called an SC2. It's not going to replace the SC1. It's going to, they're going to live together. Uh, but the SC2 adds a little bit more functionality and you can downscale as far as 480. So if you do have a 4K source and you have a 720p display somewhere in the system, you can put this scaler, you know, it's the last thing in the signal chain before the TV. It's, a, it's another small product that you can put behind the TV, you'll never see it. And you can make the 720p TV happy and, and still be able to show, uh, you know, every single screen will still be able to show a picture. What about a distributed system? This one's gonna be a little more complex. Uh, maybe you have multiple sources. You have a couple cable boxes, but you also have a couple of streaming devices or Blu-ray players that are UHD. Uh, so you have a mix of UHD and HD sources. Uh, you may have multiple displays in multiple zones where some of the TVs are UHD and 4K and, and new. Some of the displays are a little bit old, like what we talked about on the previous slide. Uh, what would happen if you tried to send the HD display UHD signal? You would end up with no picture or maybe a flashing picture or something that your customer is not going to be happy with at the end of the day. So how do we work within uh, a mixed system like this that's a little bit bigger? Well, you can use a matrix switch that has built-in scaling, which ours do. So in this particular situation, if you look across the bottom of the screen, you'll, you'll see four, I'm sorry, six 4K sources, two 1080p sources, which could be, you know, direct TV boxes, cable boxes, older streaming devices, anything like that. But maybe the rest of your sources are 4K. Across the top of the diagram, you'll notice that there's six 4K displays and two 1080p displays. So again, to make sure that all of these displays are showing the right content, and all the sources are playing the right content, you can use a matrix switch with a scaler built in. 4K source to 4K display, no big deal, no scaling has to happen. But when you go from a 4K source to a 1080p display, uh, or maybe a 1080p source to a 4K display, you wanna be able to either up or downscale those signals so the display will show the right picture and, um, and uh, you, know, you'll, you're, uh, you won't have to worry about, you know, only six of the TVs playing uh, when you're watching the Masters or something like that. You'll be able to see the Masters on every single TV, even if some of the TVs were not uh, 4K and HDR. Now, what about a retrofit system? Uh, this is something that um, I think we'll be dealing with for a few years to come, at least a few. Um, you may have a system that's pre-wired with Cat5 cable and your sources are in a closet somewhere and the TV is hanging up in the living room or in a bedroom or something like that. So you're in a little bit of a predicament now because your customer wants to upgrade to 4K and HDR, but they cannot rip out the infrastructure. So the question now becomes, how do I still get 4K and HDR signal through older infrastructure? And there's a really cool trick that you can do. The SC1 scaler that we looked at on this slide, what you can do with that you can actually get two of them. One of them comes right after the source. The other one goes right before the display. Now, the way this works is I get an 18 gig signal out of the source. It gets compressed down to 10 gigs to get through the older infrastructure. Once it comes out into the other scaler, then it gets unpackaged back to 18 gigs and then back into the TV. Now, I know compression is a scary word. It always makes me cringe, but uh, the way that this particular product does compression, it's not going to be uh, anything bad to the picture. It's not going to mess up the picture. It's not going to make it look pixelated or anything like that. Uh, these particular products have a very specific kind of compression called ICT. Let's take a quick look at an example of, of what this might look like. So IT, ICT is invisible compression technology. It's something that's found in, in a lot of our products. It's proprietary to us. It's something that we came up with. Um, and just a quick example of what this actually looks like. If you look at the left side of the screen, uh, this is the uh, menu screen of it looks like an Apple TV 4K. And you'll notice the black arrows point these out. You'll notice there's some stripes or some banding uh, within these solid colors. Now this is using a product without ICT. If you look at the picture on the right side of the screen, you'll notice that all the banding is gone, all the artifacts are gone, all the picture artifacts are gone, and the solid colors are now smooth transitions from, in this case, like a darker green to a lighter green, and you don't have that banding and, and, and you, don't have a, a, um, you, know, you don't have any degradation in the picture quality at all. 
So when you're using things like the scaler, um, you know, these do have ICT built in, but you can also expect um, ICT to work for things like extenders and, um, and matrix, switch, matrix switches and things like that as well. So a couple things to talk about with tools. We're only as good as our tools. So, um, you know, the, uh, the best thing that you can do as an integrator is, is have, have the right tools. You guys probably spend tons and tons of money on things like drills and drill bits and things like that. Um, you know, so why not have some tools that let you test infrastructure, test cables, and test devices as well? This is really where the time savings comes in when you're troubleshooting, um, or if you're or if you're building a system. Uh, the two different kits that that we have in particular are the Fox and the Hound kit, which is what you see on the left side of the screen, the little uh, dark gray and green boxes over here. On the right side of the screen, you see the Meridio 6A and 6G test kit. Um, there is a, a little bit of a difference between the two. If you were an integrator who was installing, troubleshooting, and calibrating video, you'd want to go with something like the 6A and 6G combo on the right side of the screen. Because the 6G in particular, uh, that can be your pattern generator for video calibration. It talks to Calman, it makes things automated, and it makes your life a lot easier as a calibrator. If you're not calibrating, that's okay. Uh, the kit on the left is the Fox and the Hound kit. That does just about everything that the 6A and 6G kit does. Um, except for it does not have any calibration capabilities. Um, but with both kits, in either case, uh, you can test devices, you can test infrastructure, you can read EDIDs, uh, you can do all kinds of things. So let's take a look at an example of the output of a device. So it's a real simple setup. The output of the device would plug into the analyzer. Um, within about two button pushes, you can see everything that you need to see about that signal. So the right side of the screen, we've kind of blown up the 6A screen a little bit so you can see exactly what's going on. So let's take a look at what's going on with this uh, particular signal. Uh, if we look at the top line, that tells us our timing, which is our resolution. In this case, 3840 by 2160p, that's 4K. Um, 59.9 hertz, that's 60 frames per second. Uh, if we look at the color space, it's 422 chroma color, uh, chroma subsampling. So we know what's going on there. Uh, we're also dealing with Rec 2020 or BT 2020 color space. Video type, that's an HDMI connection, it's a no-brainer. Uh, it also tells us the HDCP type, in this case it was 2.2. Tells us the color depth was eight bits. Now here's the really important number, guys. The uh, TMDS bandwidth. This tells us exactly how much bandwidth is coming out of that specific device. And in this specific example, it was 17.8 gigs, which is right at the you know top of our 18 gig threshold. And then uh, the line after that talks uh, calls out the HDR metadata, it's present. So that means this is a 4K, 60 frames per second, HDR picture at 8 bits with 422 chroma uh, in HDCP version 2.2. So if you're trying to figure out why you can't get 4K to the TV or HDR to the TV, you plug in this analyzer and you look for the HDR metadata. If it says not present, then you know there's not HDR coming out of that specific device. If your timing says 1920 by 1080, you know 4K is not coming out of that device. So again, um, Within a few seconds, you can power the analyzer up, plug it in, take a quick read of the signal, and now you know what to do next when it comes to troubleshooting. Another solution for HDMI cables. Um, one of our sales guys, Dusty, he's, uh, he's here showing a picture of testing an HDMI cable. This is a very simple setup. The HDMI cable goes in between the generator and the analyzer, and within a couple of button pushes, you can see exactly what's going on with that HDMI cable. So the picture on the right is what you would see on the screen when testing an HDMI cable. So first, we want to make sure that the generator and the analyzer, or what would uh, in the real world would be maybe a, a source and a display, we want to make sure that they have communication. That's the 5 volt. That's okay. So we know those devices know that each other are there. From there, we start running some tests. Uh, the first test is 4K60 at 18 gigs. That passes. The second test is same resolution, but at 30 frames per second. That's 9 gigs. That also passes. 4.5 gigs, that's 1080p at 60 frames per second. Then we have 720p at 60 frames per second. And then finally, 480p at 60 frames per second, which is a you know one gig um, that passes as well. Then we test the DDC channels, um, you know things like HDCP, uh, CEC, stuff like that. That channel passed okay, no problem. And then the hot plug detect. So if I were testing an HDMI cable and got these kinds of results, then I know that that cable is now safe to install and it should not cause me any problems. Um, this is something that you could do before the installation. In fact, that's what I recommend. If, um, if you test your HDMI cables, maybe in the lab or in the office, maybe you have a pile of them that you know are good, that you've tested in the past, 
uh, that's where I'm going to be getting my HDMI cables from. If not, no big deal. Then you could always test your cables, you know, while you're at the client's home or while you're on the job site. And really, the whole point of this, guys, is, um, you know, this has happened to me before in the past. I put in an HDMI cable, maybe it's 25 feet or 30 feet or something like that, and um, you know, it gets pre-wired, the drywall goes up, and then we come back later to put all the equipment in, and that HDMI cable fails. So don't let that happen to you. Save yourself some time and make sure those HDMI cables are tested before you bury them in the wall. Something else we should talk about too with, with HDR, um, we talked about Dolby Vision and not every, um, not every device out there supports it. So you know, if that's something that's really important to your customer, then it's important to test the products for Dolby Vision. Uh, you can test the display, you can test the infrastructure. So in the Meridio 6G generator, you have a built-in Dolby Vision test pattern. And what you'll see on the example on the screen right now is there's a blue check mark in the SDR box. That would indicate that whatever I was testing at the time was not capable of Dolby Vision. This is a quick test. It only takes a few minutes, a few seconds actually. Um, now, if there was a blue check mark in the Dolby Vision box on the top of the screen, then that means the Dolby Vision metadata is there, which means there's a Dolby Vision signal and it's getting all the way through the, to the display. And I know that the system is ready to go for Dolby Vision. So look, basically plug the device in, plug the uh, generator in, pull up this test pattern, press OK, watch the TV screen, see where the check mark is. Now you know what to do next, if anything. But if you get a blue check mark at Dolby Vision, then you're ready to rock and roll. Okay, next, we're gonna take a look at some troubleshooting, things to look for, things to test, and exactly what you should be testing when it comes to the analyzer and the generator. So a couple of things that will make your life a lot easier when you're troubleshooting. Number one, go slow, take your time, test one thing at a time. There's nothing more frustrating than randomly plugging in HDMI cables, running up the stairs, checking the TV, running back down to the rack, plugging in different cables and different inputs and things like that. It's a big headache. It's a big waste of time. So take it slow, test one thing at a time. I always carry a little notebook with me and I take notes, um, especially in a big complex system. Uh, you know, the, the, this what you're seeing on the screen right now, the diagram, that's, that's a bigger system. That's a more complex system for sure. So I want to be able to take notes of what I've tested so far and what I need to test still, like a little checklist. You can do this with a, you know, there's lots of voice recorder apps. You could do it there. You could take notes on your phone if you'd like to. But the point of this is, is to, to keep it simple for you, uh, give, you some, give you some less headaches. Um, so what's going on in this diagram is we have three sources on the left side of the screen. Those all connect to a matrix switch. And there's two displays in the system. So that let's say these two displays, one's in the bedroom, one's in the living room, but all this equipment is in a, in a closet somewhere in the, in the home. So we have to run extenders also to the displays. So we've got sources, matrix switch, extenders, and displays. So if we take a look, I've numbered the, the different test points here, and I've numbered the different things that you should check when you're troubleshooting. So number one, something you should figure out before the installation. Are all the devices in this system capable of 18 gigs? Are all of the HDMI cables capable of 18 gigs? And I mentioned this before, has firmware been updated on everything? Sources, switches, extenders, televisions. Uh, we've seen lots and lots of systems not work properly because of firmware. The firmware is not updated. It happens. So, um, you know, hopefully you're somewhere where you have internet connection. These firmware updates can be very, very simple, especially with the source and the television. Uh, one thing that I would recommend doing Maybe carry a little thumb drive with you in your tool bag or in your backpack. That way, if you're somewhere where there's no internet connection, um, you know, you could, you know, go to Starbucks or something, download the firmware to the thumb drive, and then you can update the TV with the thumb drive or something like that. So that's a good thing to have with you as well. Uh, if we look at number two, it points to the sources. Um, are all these sources functional? Um, I know this is going to sound silly, but are the sources powered up? Um, it happens to the best of us. I've taken tech support calls in the past. I've probably made tech support calls in the past where it turns out, duh, the source isn't turned on or the HDMI cable is not plugged in. So make sure the source is powered up. Um, you know, make sure the HDMI cable is plugged in nice and tight um, and make sure it's, uh, I think I said this, make sure it's powered up. Uh, number three, that points to the connection between the source and the matrix switch. And in this case, it'd be an HDMI cable. Is the HDMI cable too long? That will cause problems in 4K systems. In fact, what we're seeing right now, uh, HDMI cables over about 12 or 15 feet, we run into all kinds of problems with um, you know, the HDR not, not getting through those longer cables. So make sure you're not using cables that are too long, if, especially if they're traditional HDMI uh, you know, copper-based cables. 
Did this cable pass a cable test? That's something that you should test. You got to figure that out. Um, something else that we see all the time, we see HDMI cables these days that are directional. Uh, and if you have them plugged in the wrong way or pointing in the right direction or the wrong direction rather, you will have problems with the system. So if the cables are HDMI, if, if the HDMI cables are directional, make sure they're pointing the right way. Number four, that points to the matrix switch. Um, is the switch powered up? Are the HDMI connections snug? Um, I've seen systems before where the HDMI cable wasn't plugged in all the way, and of course that's going to cause problems. Uh, something that I took a call on recently, are the HDMI cables routed properly? We had a guy call and he was uh, stuck at a house. He'd been there, you know, it's eight, nine o'clock at night or something like that. And it turns out that the whole system wasn't working because well, most of the system wasn't working because he accidentally had a source plugged into an output on the matrix switch. So it's a simple thing, guys, but you got to check those things. You got to check the easy things. Um, something else you may be doing at the matrix switch, you may be managing the EDID. You know, we want to make sure that you're using an EDID at the matrix switch that's asking the source for a 4K HDR signal. So you've got to check your EDIDs as well. Um, some matrix switches can send out a test pattern, which is super helpful. Uh, maybe you can't get video through the extender. Maybe you can't get video all the way to the TV. Can you at least get a test pattern? If you can get a test pattern through the system, then you know, then you can start eliminating the display as a problem or the extender as a problem. If you're able to get a test pattern through, but not video, then you know my inclination would be to go start looking at the source to see what's going on there, make sure the source is set up correctly. So that's a very important thing too. Uh, number five, that points to the HDMI cable that connects the output of the matrix switch to the input of the extender kit. Again, with the HDMI cable, is it too long? Did you test it? And if it's directional, is it pointing in the right direction? Number six, that points to the transmitter side of the extender. Check the HDMI connection, make sure it's tight. Is the extender powered up? Uh, you'll know from some of our extenders, if, you, if you've ever used them before, uh, with our extenders, with most of them, you only have to power one side of the trans or one side of the extender kit. That does make things a little bit easier. But if not, make sure that part of the kit is getting power. Most extender kits I've ever seen uh, have status lights that tell you if the um, if the category cable is passing signal, or if the HDMI is connected, or if power is connected. You know, if there's some status lights on the extender kit, make sure to check those. Uh, number seven. That points to the category cable that's connecting the transmitter to the receiver uh, in the extender kit. Uh, we take a lot of tech support calls on, on this particular step number seven. Um, you'll see extender kits that are capable of doing 40 meters, 70 meters, maybe 100 meters. And if you use a 50 meter Cat5 cable on a 40 meter extender kit, you're going to have a lot of problems with getting signal through. So make sure the category cable is not too long. Make sure it's the right length. Um, are you using a good category cable? Uh, Cat5e is kind of the minimum, um, but for maximum performance, we're recommending going with solid core Cat6. That's also a little bit better for future proofing. Um, is the cable damaged? Is it twisted? We've seen twisted cables cause problems. Um, if the cable is damaged in any way, of course, that will cause problems. You know, maybe a staple went through the cable at some point or a screw in the drywall was going up. All important stuff to check. Did you terminate the cable yourself? Um, maybe it came pre-terminated from the factory, whoever made the cable. Maybe you terminated it yourself. Maybe a coworker terminated it and you didn't, you, you don't know for sure if the termination was done correctly or done well. Um, you know, the, the thing that we do see a lot too is you may have a um, category cable that will pass with a normal CAT cable tester. But with video and passing those types of signals, it's a little bit different than passing just normal you know, data, like internet type data. Um, so even though the category cable passes a, 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 a test with a CAT tester, you still may have problems um, getting video through it. The data is a little bit different. Um, and we also see the RJ45 easy ends. If those are not terminated exactly perfectly, you'll have lots and lots of problems with your signal there too. So if you could get away from the easy ends, that's really ideal, but you've got to check your ends as well. Number eight, that's the receiver part of the extender kit. Check your HDMI connection. Is it snug? Does that side of the kit get power, whether it's powered from one side or the other? Do you have a power light on that one? Um, have you checked the status lights? Is it getting a category signal? Is it, is it, getting, is it giving an HDMI output signal? Um, Sometimes with extender kits, you can manage the EDID with the extender. Are you managing the EDID correctly? Are you letting the EDID come from the TV? Or are you doing the EDID management at the extender? Some extender kits, you can also send out a test pattern. So again, 
Um, you know, if you want to be able to see if signal is getting through at period, you can send a test signal through or a test pattern through. Number nine, that gets to the HDMI cable, the last cable in the signal in the signal chain. That's the trans. I'm sorry, the re the receiver part of the extender kit into the input of the television. Is that HDMI cable okay? Did it pass a cable test? Is it too long? Is it directional? Is it pointing the right way? All things are important to check. And then last but not least in this system, number 10, that's the television. Is it powered on? Is it in the right input? Is it in the right input for 18 gigs? We see TVs out there today. Maybe the TV has four HDMI inputs and only HDMI 2 and 3 are capable of 18 gigs. So not only are you plugged into the right input period, but are you plugged into the right input for the, um, for the 18 gig signal? Now, there are some TVs out there where you not only have to plug into the correct input for 18 gigs, but you also have to configure the input for 18 gigs. So when you're going through the TV's menu, you look for things like UHD color. You want to turn that kind of stuff on. You might see uh, HDMI deep color. Again, that's something that you want to turn on. And when you turn those things on, that actually changes the edit of the TV. So it asks the source for an 18 gig signal. So you could be plugged into the right input, but not be configured correctly and still not get HDR. So all kinds of weird stuff can happen if you, if you miss anything. Uh, the other thing you'll notice on this ch uh, troubleshooting chart are little red and blue boxes. You see three after the source, uh, a few by the matrix switch, a few by the extender kits, and a few by the, the television. Now, the way I label these, these are specific test points uh, to test the system or to test the device. So the blue boxes are where you might place a generator. So maybe your source to your TV, maybe there's no HDR getting to the TV. So I can put the generator in place of the source, and I can generate an 18 gig HDR signal and see if it gets through the system. If it does, then I know to go look at the source as part of the problem. If not, then I can maybe start looking at other things like infrastructure, these extenders, the matrix switch, whatever. Um, so you could always put the generator in place of the source to figure out what's going on. Um, the little red boxes that you see are, are uh, test points for the analyzer. So if you have the source set up for 18 gigs and 4K and HDR, hook up the analyzer to it. Make sure that it's actually happening. Uh, make sure you have all your settings correct. On the output side of the matrix switch, you could always put a generator here. You can test the signal that's going from the test point from the matrix switch all the way through to the TV. So if I put a generator right here where this blue box is, I could, I could generate an 18 gig HDR signal and I can run through the extender and see if the TV actually gets it or not. Then I can go back, and if that is the case, then I can go back and look at the matrix switch, make sure my matrix switch is configured correctly. I can also put an analyzer right before the extender kit. If I'm not getting an 18 gig signal or HDR signal to the TV, where is it falling apart? Um, if I put the analyzer right here before the extender kit and the analyzer is showing me that I'm getting HDR signal, then I know that the extender is not set up correctly. Um, and two more, uh, if I put the generator right into the TV and generate an 18 gig HDR signal, I can see if the little HDR logo pops up on the TV. I know the TV is working properly and set up properly. Then I can start working my way backwards to figure out what's going on. Uh, maybe it's infrastructure, maybe it's one of these devices, but there's some reason, there's gotta be some reason why the TV is showing HDR from the generator, but not from your sources. So you can backtrack from there and figure out exactly what's going on. And then last but not least, if the TV is not playing HDR, put an analyzer in place of the TV and analyze the signal. If the, if the analyzer is showing you that there's no HDR, then you know it's a problem with the system and not the TV. If the analyzer is showing HDR, then you can figure out what to do next from there. So all this stuff will help you um, when you're troubleshooting especially. And I've been in those jobs before, years ago, before I had these tools where you know I'm, I'm just kind of randomly plugging things in and I'm randomly choosing settings and I'm, you know, like I said before, running up the stairs to see if, if I get a picture and uh, having these tools, guys, makes your life much, much, much easier. Now, a couple of tips when it comes to troubleshooting. I, I mentioned a couple of these before. When you're troubleshooting, test one thing at a time. It's like working on a car. You know, you don't rip the entire engine out because it won't start. You know, start with the simplest thing and work your way back from there. Um, as you're troubleshooting, take notes. Uh, what do I need to test? And start checking things off the list. Uh, make a little checklist, if you will. Uh, you can really simplify troubleshooting if, um, you know, let's say, for example, in this system, you're not able to get HDR on the TV, and you're not sure if it's the infrastructure, you're not sure if the, it's the extender, you're not sure if it's the matrix switch, you're not even sure if it's the source per se. Well, if you can take the source 
carry it over to where the TV is and plug it directly into the TV and you do get an HDR signal, then you know it's something with either the extender, the infrastructure, a cable, or a matrix switch. So if you have the capability of plugging the source directly into the, to the television, uh, you can you can do some eliminating there. Uh, same thing with receivers. You know, if you want to plug the, um, maybe there's an extender between the source and the, the receiver, you know, maybe you can plug the source straight into the receiver and, and do some troubleshooting that way too. If I were building a brand new system right now, I would definitely consider using fiber for my infrastructure. Um, I mentioned that home before that they ran Cat5 and Coax to every single TV location. Um, that's fine for today. Not going to be a great solution for tomorrow when we're talking about uh, 48 gigs. Uh, and it's right around the corner. The spec has been written. And uh, from what I've read, that we're going to see some TVs in 2019 that are supporting HDMI 2.1. So we're going to start to see you know, higher resolutions, higher frame rates, all kinds of cool stuff with HDMI 2.1. So if I were building a home right now or if I was building a, a video system or an audio system right now, I would definitely be considering at least uh, running fiber cable. Um, test all your cables before installing them. That's, that's true for category cables. If you do do fiber, there's plenty of ways to test fiber. Uh, it's very easy nowadays. And of course, your HDMI cables, test all those before you, before you put them in the wall. Uh, run conduit whenever possible. That's going to save you lots of headaches in the future. Uh, if you do end up having to replace the infrastructure at one point in time, it's much easier to tie the old cable to the new cable and pull it straight through. I've been in plenty of attics in my life, and um, if I can avoid that in the future, then then I definitely, definitely will, especially being in Florida. Uh, attic work in Florida in the summer is not fun. Um, and again, plan and prepare. The more prepared you are, the better you plan. Uh, it's just like cooking a big meal for your family. Uh, the more prep work goes into it, the easier the, the cooking goes. So plan and prepare as much as you can. Uh, like I said, take some notes, use a voice recorder, whatever you have to do to make your life a little bit easier. But the more you plan, the more you prepare, the better off you are. All right, quick recap. Uh, we talked about mixed systems with uh, HD and UHD devices. Um, this will cause you headaches. It probably has, and if it hasn't, it probably will eventually. Um, we were able to easily recognize non-UHD devices. You know, you have plenty of resources to do that. You have manufacturers' websites. You can give us a call. Um, you, know, you can always use Google and things like that, of course. Um, we talked a little bit about being able to test those devices with your analyzer. Uh, we talked a little bit about being able to, to, to get signals through the rest of the system with a generator. Uh, and we also talked about testing your HDMI cables with the analyzer and generator, too. Um, organized troubleshooting is the way to go. Um, again, randomly plugging things in and trying different settings, uh, that's going to cause you more headaches than, than, than you need to deal with. Make it easier on yourself, use the right tools, and be as organized as possible. And again, just knowing how to work around and with non-UHD devices. Um, I had a client recently, he had a really nice high-end $5,000 receiver, he bought it a few years ago, he loved the way it sounded, and he didn't want to upgrade it. He didn't have the budget for it, that's totally understandable. He just went out and blew a bunch of money on a TV and a, and a new Blu-ray player. So, you know, he didn't have any money left over for a new receiver. But a very simple, very inexpensive device, such as that 1x2 splitter or even that little 4x2 matrix switch, um, that will still allow you to use older devices with, with newer sources and newer displays. So, guys, that's about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, like I said, if you have any questions and Tom wasn't able to get to them in the question box, I will post those questions and their answers on the Meridio website. If you have meridio.com forward slash support, we do have forums. I recommend checking out those forums for all kinds of different tech tips like this. Uh, this video has been recorded, so if you want to go back and recap and review it later, we'll have it posted up on our YouTube page within the next few days. Uh, visit us at avproedge.com to see all of our products uh, with um, you know, matrix switches, extenders, and things like that. There's also forums on avproedge.com as well with lots and lots of cool tech tips. Uh, tech tips. Uh, you can always give our tech support team a call. The phone number is right there on the screen. Um, and if you have any specific questions for me that you'd like to run by me, feel free. My uh, email address is jason at avproglobal.com. Again, guys, thank you so much for your time, and uh, we will see you next time.